So we're going to very quickly go over how to download and install um, Unity. We're going to be using 2020. Uh, now they have very weird naming conventions. So it's 2020.1. It's just listed as 1.0 here, but it's really, let's see if we go, it's 1.0 F1. So, um, and you got to be careful when you're working in teams with what version of Unity you're using because Unity doesn't mind as much springing forward if you're going to continue to work in that new one, um, but it doesn't like to go back like most software does. Um, so if you were working with a team and say one of you is working in 1.1, that wouldn't break your file for the most part. Um, but what will happen is that whoever was working in 1.0 is not going to be able to work on that anymore. There are some exceptions. Um, depending on what build, maybe there won't be as big a difference. But uh, what is the benefit of not using the most recent build? Uh, it's, um, what would be the word? It's more tested. Like they've gotten a lot of the bugs out. Um, Another benefit is if you use the school computers and you're like working in a team and one of you maybe doesn't have a computer or doesn't have a laptop they can bring back and forth or stuff like that. The ones on the labs right now in most of the computer lab, oh, my thing just sprung, is um, I believe they're still using this one. But here, let me pop this um, in the chat for you guys. This is where you go to download it. And we'll make sure you go to 2020. So you could use 2021. And for this demonstration purposes, um, if you really wanted to, it'd be fine. 2021 is relatively well tested, um, especially now. I would say uh, you'd really have to look through the release notes to see what the difference between all these different versions are. Um, but if you think like, oh, this is something I want to play with. And I might at any time in the future be using the computer lab to work on it. I'm pretty sure they're still using 2020.1.0. That's what I'm using in my casual game production class right now. We're making a bullet hell game and it's standing the test of time pretty good so far. So um, yeah, so this is a pretty good safe build to be using. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on Unity Hub. It's going to say, uh, oh, well, I already um, <laughs> I already have it, so it wants me to open it. But it'll ask you to install it. You'll run through the really, really basic, like, yes, I want to install it. Um, if you already had Hub, or I know for some reason um, this button sometimes doesn't want to work and it, like, won't load. So you can just go to whatever you're on, Windows, Mac, or Linux, and install it here. And then once you do that, it'll ask you to install Hub anyway. Um, so I'll give you guys a couple minutes to let that get installed. It shouldn't take too long. Um, also, at any point, if something's still downloading or you guys are taking a minute, um, like it's not ready yet, just let me know and I'll slow down. Or I'll take that into consideration when I'm like talking about the next thing that you guys don't actually have it set up yet. Um, but what the hub is, like, you're like, what the heck is Unity Hub? The license thing takes a minute. Yeah. Um, I'll help you with that, too. Is it should pop up Unity Hub. Um, also, here's the thing. I'm working with different um, versions. Is when you make a new pro uh, project, you can select which version you're working in. See, I have some stuff that I made in the version that's actually one above this for another class. Um, this is the one I'm working on in my casual game class. And then here is a, uh, one I worked on last night to help prep for this uh, presentation. And this student thing allows you to get pro for free. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So when you, um, get this downloaded, I'll ask you to add it. Uh, having installed the actual version, you shouldn't have to worry about, um, linking any of that. Uh, I will get this out there too then while you guys are downloading that. You'll want to make an account. Now you can do that on the same site if you scroll up. Um, I already have one, but you can create um, a Unity ID. Oh, wow. Um, 
Well, that's my, it's just my email. It wasn't like a big, oh no, you saw it, but I will um, pop back out. You guys know I live in the United States, so that wasn't a big, uh, like, streaming docs moment. Uh, do we need to download the build support for any of these optional things? You shouldn't. You can if you want, but um, you shouldn't need to download anything extra besides what it, like, pre-selects for you. Um, I do stream on Twitch, so when I click something and it starts showing my information, I freak out a little bit, but that was, uh, that was fine. That wasn't a big deal. Um, uh, but yeah, let me pop this student plan in here for you guys. So you'll go here, and you just scroll down, and it says post-secondary students. Click it to get started. Um... Yeah, it'll say, are you sure you want to do it for this account? Um, you'll say continue. And then it'll ask you for some information. It'll say like, okay, what uh, institution do you work for? You'll just say, you know, you go to UCF, blah, blah, blah. And um, it'll say it's going to check it. It doesn't really. It's just like verifying that that is a university. And then it would probably retroactively take your license away if you were lying. But by doing the student thing, you not only get some, like, cool bonus packs of stuff, like, I know there's, like, um, some really weird random packs, like, there's a um, Japanese, like, classroom model pack. It's very specific, but I think they give you, like, a couple thousand dollars worth of free stuff, which is really cool. But it's the only way to get um, dark mode. Uh, for without paying. Um, I'll also let you guys download this while you're waiting for your thing to install. Oh, yes, what I've always wanted. The model of a Japanese classroom. Yeah, it's uh, I can't remember if it's a regular classroom or a Japanese. I think maybe Unreal gives you the Japanese classroom. It's very, I don't know what's with uh, Unreal and giving you classrooms, but um, this will be the little free asset pack that we use for this demonstration purposes. Um, it's not super important that this is being used specifically. It's just, it's got some pre-done tiles and I'm gonna show you guys how to lay out um, tiles for like a platformer or um, anything like that. Like Celeste definitely was using tiles. Um, yeah, but make sure you have this version. Ooh, my hub was already open. But yeah, I'll just uh, start going through like the really, really basic stuff. I could open this one, but I'm not going to. I'm going to make a new one so I can show you guys how to set up anything. And then if uh, we do have some problems, like if something's not working, we can always pop this version open to see what the problem is. So I will show you guys that yeah, we're going to use this version. Um, we're going to be working in 2D. What's interesting is you can make a 2D game in 3D, but there are like some very specific settings, um, and I would rather you guys just get the hang of like all the really basic tools before you start, um, you know, playing with like grids and 3D and stuff. Um, let's just go and call this. We we'll call the other one Intro Workshop. We'll just call this Demonstration. Uh, Okay, yeah. You can select what folder you want to drop it in and location. Um, I'm pretty sure you can always change your project name later. It's not super important, but um, we'll just go ahead and create. And it can take a minute. Um, it's probably going to take my computer a little longer than normal, just because we're also live streaming. Um, but it can, it can take a minute. Am I still down there? Yeah, that's totally okay. That's what I asked them to put the, uh, prereqs on there, but I didn't see it actually go through, which isn't a big deal because I get to show you guys how to do it anyway. I will also, before the end of the stream, 
drop my Discord and I'll drop my Twitch and stuff like that. I do do some game dev stuff on Twitch every now and then, usually related to whatever I have to do for class, just because uh, you get stretched for time a little bit. But I will drop it in there. So if anybody has any other questions or if they want to do like a follow up, I could always do um, a workshop separated from Night Hacks. Um, for anybody who wants to see like a continuation of this or maybe like how to do it in 3D. The, um, nice, that might be cool. Good. Um, one of the benefits to doing stuff in, also if you see like random little um, warnings like that, it, they're usually not important unless you're like actually in far into the project. Um, beyond that, uh, they're usually like weird editor warnings that pop up because something like loaded weird and they're usually not a problem but yeah the uh, one of the benefits to doing 3d over 2d is uh it's more artistic in that you can like layer art um a certain way like i'm pretty sure if you've ever played hollow knight they've got all those different um like environmental pieces and some are destructible and some look really really far back and they're like blurred and there's like giant monsters and stuff but um so they make a 2D platformer in a 3D environment. Yes. And so they have, um, like, it's all pretty 2D. I don't think they mess with different layers or anything when it comes to actual platforming. But there is, um, like, cool effects you can do in the background that are harder to do in a traditional 2D setting. Um, but, yeah, we'll just mess with 2D. Because 2D also has layers. They have stuff to uh, try to, you know... Uh, mimic that setup in 2D. It's just interesting to have it in 3D because you can kind of do wackier stuff. It is um, a little harder to make sure everything's lined up, but not as hard. Um, are most people still downloading stuff? I know Unity can take a hot minute. If you did it through here, Hub should install with it. If it doesn't and you had to go to like this one instead and select um just to download unity it'll prompt you to install the hub as well um unity really wants you to use the hub and it's not that big a deal it is much more organized i do prefer that like being able to like see all my projects lined up for me it's very nice um I think what's going to happen is it'll ask you to ins um, register your license. Um, so you do have to make an account. That's why I said you could do it from you could do it from either here or oh well or the student link. Um, you go up here, make an account, make an account first, then go to the student version, um, get that stuff. Then you'll receive an email like immediately after from Unity. Um, and, uh, like, if you register with your, uh, Knight's email, you'll open Outlook, and it'll literally say, like, here's your license, and you just copy that, and then you go to the hub. I keep opening when I could just pop up my thing, but whatever. Um, and then you go to manage license. So for me, it's up in the upper right corner. Go to manage license. Um, keep trying to make sure there's nothing, uh, I'm not supposed to show on here, but it's all good. Um, so you'll get the professional license when you register as a student. Oh, it's like, oh no, mine's going to, uh, expire soon, but it's not, it's next year. Um, you'll go, well, this is the setup where your editor folder is. Um, but yeah, you go to license management. And there should be something here. You can go activate a new license. Manual activation is usually what you'll have to click. And you can do save license request. And it'll just, you click that and it basically um, tells Unity, like, I want a new license. And then you, you know, you're going to be doing some copying and pasting. It's not too hard. But let me know if anybody has any troubles with that. We could also share your screen if we had to. Sometimes it's hard to remember all the different little links off the top of your head. Um, I could, while your stuff is still downloading, give you a brief intro to the Unity 
um, engine here. So at the top, it just tells you uh, your project name, what scene, scene, what scene you're in, um, like what build you're working towards, and then what version you're using. And I don't know why it says preview packages in use. I don't think that really matters. Um, you're going to basically always be using packages, so I don't know. Let's just dismiss that. All right, so this is your um, main editor right here. This is your scene. It's hard to see anything. It just looks like a gray blob because there's no background. Um, so up here is your, your tabs, your main ones. You might not have an animator tab right here. That doesn't matter, especially for these purposes. It's just a window you can pop up. In fact, if I pop this up, I can show you how to bring it back. So you have your scene, this is where you work in. This is all the still images and the still assets where you're placing them and where they exist in the scene. If you click game, it'll show you what your scene would look like if the game was actually playing this. Uh, it defaults to this like weird blue background. Um, I think you can actually change that color specifically, but it doesn't matter. Um, so if we had something in the scene, like I will, um, oh, I don't have my stuff loaded. Good. I'll show you how to load the stuff in in a second. If I drag something here, in fact, I can make a, if I just made a little sprite, I don't think I have a picture. What if I just made it like red? Um, it might be really tiny. Where is he? Oh, I have to make like a little, let's just make him a little, a knob. Just like a circle I can use. Let's use the knob. See, you can see him. Oh, he's so tiny. Um, but now if we clicked on game, it would show you there's our little our little sprite. And then you have the asset store. It's like right in there for you. The asset store has moved. Um, that's fine. Normally I would say get your assets loaded before you even open the editor just for simplicity's sake. Plus it'll probably help you download a little faster, but it's not super important. Um, to the right is your inspector. Whenever you click on something, it'll give you all the details about that thing. So like this is a camera. So you have transform. Just about everything has a transform. That's where it is, how it's rotated in its scale. So it's position relative to the world. Um, like, so this is main camera, so it's back about, um, like 10 steps just to try to get the actual visuals on screen rotation. It doesn't need to be rotated. It's camera. You could rotate it though, to have like weird stuff go on the screen and scale. Uh, when it comes to cameras, you really don't want to be messing with scale too much, but um, I would say more often just back it up as opposed to messing with the scale. Um, so yeah, actually this is that funky color. So we could change it to have, uh, be like a pale red instead. So now if we played that background is red instead of blue. And it's because your camera is actually rendering the background. It matched the original blue pretty good. Most of this stuff you won't mess with because uh, for the most part, the main camera functions pretty well, just as is. Um, to your very bottom, you have the console. This is going to be where debug messages pop up or where warnings or errors or stuff like that pops up. Um, you'll, be do you'll be looking here a lot for when you're writing scripts and you're like, why isn't it working? Or like, why... Well, what do you mean I can't convert a vector to an int? <laughs> it, uh, it'll be like, you can't do that. Um, you'll have your assets and your folders to the very, very left. This is like your general project stuff. Um, so like here right now, we basically don't have anything. We have a very empty editor, but this is where like scenes Scenes are the specific thing you're working in right now. 
Um, so like if you go to a different location, you might want to make a whole new scene and then make it load between scenes and you can name the scenes. Um, like in the one I'm making for casual, we have, um, it's a jail with all these different bosses. So we have like your cell is a scene and we have the courtyard is a scene and we have like each boss is its own scene. Um, now you can make a bunch of things in, in one scene and you could have it scroll way out and have all this different stuff on the screen and have all this crazy whatever, but it's just easier per, for a performance if you're not having like a crazy amount of stuff in one area. Like I'm sure if you had something like Skyrim in here, you would have just like a billion scenes. So after download, make a 3D template. You're gonna be wanting to make a 2D template. Again, you could do it in 3D, but um, it's going to be much more complicated. You're going to want to do 2D. Um, let's see. Your hierarchy. So this is the stuff that pops up. It'll give you your scene. And you can load multiple scenes at once. I usually do this if something's working in one scene and it's not working in another. So like my audio is working in one and not in another, but they're very similarly set up, I'll load the second scene on top of the first one and be like, let's just click through all this stuff. Um, and you can hide them so I could like pop this off. Um, Cause when you load a scene, it'll literally just smack it right on top of the other one. And you'll be like, oh my God, that looks horrible. So you'll click one off, oopsies. Uh, click one off so you don't have to see it. Or you can click on individual stuff. So you could turn off the main camera or I believe I can load that little sprite I made a second ago. Um, say that guy was here, and maybe he's standing in front of something I want to see, and I'm like, get this guy out of here. You can just pop him off. Now you don't even see him. Yeah, but we're going to get rid of him again. Can you show how to activate our license in the hub again? Yes. Okay, so you're going to want to go to up here in the top right. Um, if you're not logged in, it'll ask you to log in. Um, I'm already logged in, so I don't have to do that. And then you, it'll say, go to developer dashboard, manage license, manage organizations. You're going to want to go to manage license. Should take you right to license management. Up here, you're going to want to do, uh, I think for you, it'll essentially be the same thing doing either of these. But if I did activate new license, um, if you've done all the student stuff and you've been approved, for um, the professional license, uh, you would do Unity Plus or Pro, and then you would just paste in that number you got emailed from Unity. But if you don't have that, you're gonna go to Unity Personal, and you'll say, um, you can either say, I don't make a lot of money, or the better option would just be to say, I don't use Unity in a professional capacity. Um, oh, well, I already technically also have a personal one, so that's why it's popping up like that. But it should give you a prompt to click it, and it'll say, um, save. Oh, I forget what it is. If I go to manual activation. Oh, yeah, like right here. Um, well, see, if you don't care about how your editor looks, like if you don't need dark mode, you're fine doing just that. That should be good enough. Um, but you can also go through manual activation. You can go save license request and you can save it somewhere on your computer. I would say just save it to your desktop or like your downloads folder for quick whatever. And then you save that on, you go next and then you click um, load license. Oh, then it should, should it not give you a prompt to, okay, yeah. Now go to the manual activation page. So after you've saved that, you would click here and it'll bring up this. Um, then you'll pop that down for a second, go next, um, load license off this machine, or no, okay, I was uh, getting too ahead of myself. You would go here, you would um, browse for that thing that you just installed into your computer, or downloaded, and then um, it'll say cool, and then it'll give you a license, you'll download that, come back here, and put that in. Um, 
wish I didn't click that because now, well, it shouldn't matter because I've already loaded. I'm just going to remember not to click that off because I'm going to have to reset my license now. Um, return license. Please confirm your shoes and free an activation for the cancel on the Um. Okay, yeah, that was silly. I should have left it alone. That's okay. Uh, I'm just going to have to go find that email buried somewhere deep in my um, mailbox, and that's okay. Oops, I just clicked Unreal instead of Unity. Unreal is so annoying. Whenever Unreal opens, it wants to open Steam VR and all this extra stuff. Unity won't do that, so that's nice. Um, you can click off hub too if you're done with it. Get that out of there. Okay, so I will show you how to import. So let me click that. Oh, it's a night hacks uh, notification. Okay. The free platform game assets, I linked that in there should be still relatively um, low in the chat. Um, see, I already installed it into my computer, so it says open in Unity. Right here, though, it should ask you to just like add it to your assets. Um, just make sure it actually goes through. Sometimes when you click it, it doesn't, um, doesn't want to go through all the way. So just make sure it's actually in your thing. There should be like a little cart pop up up here somewhere. I think you can actually go to up to the right. It should say my assets. Right. Uh, this is all this free stuff you get. Snaps art school. So yeah, this was that little classroom. There's two separate classroom packs you get for whatever reason. But it should pop up here. Um, and you could do just right here, uh, open in Unity. It'll say, uh, like, do you want to open it? And it'll pop up the package manager for you. Now, I'll also show you how to open the package manager. Say that didn't work or you didn't have um, access to that web page for whatever reason. You would go to, I believe it's window. Yeah, and then you get uh, package manager. And you can just drag it up here. You can drag it wherever you could keep it um, separate. That's okay. So you'll want to go to packages and you'll want to do my assets. And this should be all the different um, stuff you have. So this is like random stuff I got from doing the student version. This is all the uh, random free packs you get. But we're going to do this free platform game assets. Make sure it's downloaded into your computer, and once that's done, it should only take a second, you'll do import. And, like, even I have to do this because it's a fresh, um, it's a fresh file, so it's, uh, gonna make me import it all over again. And it'll show this is all the different, um, assets and stuff. If there was anything you didn't want to import, you could choose not to. I'll just import everything. Where is all the student free stuff located? But um, if you got the student version, like you went and you did all that stuff where you typed in your information, here on the asset store in Unity, it should be, if you just go to My Assets, it should have put it here for you. If not, um, it should be in an email. There should be a separate email that says, look, you get all this cool free stuff. And you'll click that and it'll take you to a link where you um, can download everything. If not, let me know. You can message me on Discord later uh, when I put that down. And I can actually just send you the links to all this. And then since you're a student, um, you should be able to just download it for free anyway. Like if you clicked on. See, this is normally $100 and you get it for free. $10. $10. 
a lot of ten dollar ones. One hundred and thirty dollars. Hundred dollars. Ooh, this one's actually on sale anyway, but it's usually one hundred and thirty dollars. That's cool. Oh, I see it in my email now. Student asset pack. Yes. So we're just going to use this free platform here, but you do get all this free stuff, which is pretty cool. There might even be more stuff now. I'm not sure. I haven't had to download it. Like, see, uh, it says I got this a year ago. Um, it's probably more like two years, but it's just like not quite at the two year mark yet. Um, but yeah. So I can look over and I can already see it's in there now because before the only thing in here was scenes and now you can see uh, Bayat Games. Let's go ahead and close my package manager and let me know if you need to see how to import stuff again. But it should put uh, this folder in here and also you can resize like any window that you need to for the most part. Um, so like in situations like this where you can't really see what it's saying, you can click here. Um, and like all the words are get cut off after like eight characters. So you're like, I can't read any of this. It's okay. One, you could click on it and it should say in the inspector what the actual name of it is. So like, I'm going to show you guys how to set up tiles. Um, so that's actually something I'm probably going to have to pop in here again. If you go to, let me pop up the package manager again. So that's Windows Package Manager. And again, you can drag this up here or over here, or wherever you can just leave it here. Uh, I'm gonna put it right next to the scene game and asset store. I want, actually, uh, we're in 2D mode. So um, I was originally gonna do this all in 3D and it uh, was more complicated than I liked. And I was like, Oh, goodness, I don't want to have to tell them how to install all this stuff because it'll get overwhelming. So I forgot this stuff is actually all already there. So if I go to Window 2D, um, see, before I was going to have to have you install the tile palette, you shouldn't have to do that anymore because we're in 2D. Um, so let's go ahead and open that. It should pop up this little guy for you. So you can either make this whole screen or you can do what I did with the package manager and you can put it somewhere um, that you want to stick it uh, like next to the hierarchy or the project or the console or wherever. I just like to have this one free floating, especially because I'm doing dual monitors. So it's easy for me to just plop it over on my other monitor. Um, but you don't have to. Okay, so what we're going to do is we, to tile stuff so you can just like drag and like paint stuff right on your screen, you have to make a palette first. So we're gonna make a new palette. We'll call this um, ground because uh, ground palette. Because that's what it is. We're gonna be using it to paint the ground that our little character walks on. Um, cell size, I think I do this here, um, actually no, I can just leave that I think as one. So we'll just create that and it'll give us a file prompt of where we want to put this. I'm going to put it, let me make sure actually I'm in the right, okay I am demonstration. It's so like this might be popping me up in my other um, program. So let's do, yeah, let's just put it next to tiles. Um, let's just put it there. And to add stuff to it, we're going to click edit. And now we're going to go to 2D tiles, spring 128 by 128. And we're just going to click and then we're going to scroll all the way down click shift and click again and then i'll select everything and we're just going to drag it right on here um and then it wants to make new data this is the weird part of tiling is it's going to want to make like a whole new folder to put a whole new set of stuff even though we just like we just did it like we already have everything uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to tiles 
and I'm gonna make um, a little folder. When I click edit, nothing happens. Yeah, nothing should happen when you click edit. What you'll do is you'll drag all these tiles into it. Um, Cause what you're doing is you're just saying, I want to edit what's in my palette. Like I want to now be able to put stuff into my palette. Um, so I'm just gonna call these palette. Oops, is that how you spell palette? Yeah. Um, palette aisles. Um, and I'll just put that right there. And then I'll select that folder. And it's going to make the info for all of that. And so now all of that will just be right here. And if you click off edit, now I can click them and it gives me the options to actually do stuff. If I was in edit, I'd be saying I want to like move this stuff or do whatever. Which are we dragging in the whole folder? Um, you'll need to go into whatever folder you're using. So for me, we're going into it. We're going to tiles, 2D tiles, spring. And you can do any of them. It doesn't matter. You can do spring, autumn, or winter, whatever you fancy. But we're going to be using 128 by 128. And then you'll click the first one, go all the way to the bottom, click shift, and click again. Oops. And it should select all of them. And then you'll just drag all of those. Now, if there were some in here that you were like, I'm definitely not using that, maybe not at least in this palette, you wouldn't want to drag those in, but we're just going to drag in everything because it doesn't matter. And now this is our palette. So this is, we could select any of these and do cool stuff on here, but... Um, You'll notice it's like not showing up. You're like, why isn't it doing anything? That's because we also need a tile map. So yeah, we're gonna go to your sample scene, your hierarchy here, right click, and it'll give you a bunch of options to create stuff. Go to 2D object, go to tile map. And see now we have this grid and it's showing all this cool stuff. We are going to here. Let me just uh, move the palette for a second. So now we have this map. I'm going to call it ground map. Oop, map -o. Um, And since our scale isn't a one-to-one, -one, it's actually 128. It said it earlier. Um, I guess we could have also changed it there when it was an edit to manual or automatic. Um, it said 100. I might have just said one. It doesn't matter. If you click on one of these, it says 100 pixels per unit. So there are two ways we could fix the scaling issue that we're going to have. Um, you could either change every single one of these from 100 pixels per unit to 128, but that's like annoying and everything's already set to that. Like if we were creating everything from scratch, I would have created everything at 128. And that would technically make things a little simpler. But we didn't make this. We downloaded it. So it's all 100. So if we go to ground map and at the scale for, or is it cell size? Where is it? Um, maybe it's grid. Okay, yeah, we want to click grid. We go to cell size. And we're going to do 1.28 or 128. That's 1.28. And we're just going to do that for the X and Y. So now our scaling should be fine. If you don't do this, it's not the end of the world. It just isn't a one-to-one -one with your grid anymore. So if I bring our tile map or our tile palette back on, we have a couple of tools at the top. This little arrow just lets us select. Um, I think we could also use it to select stuff on here, but we don't have any. Um, this lets you move it. Same thing if you selected a bunch of them, you could move them. This lets you paint tiles onto your map. Um, if you had a selected box, you could fill that box or you can just drag a box on. This lets you pick. So if we had one on here, we could, uh, like a color picker, we could tile pick it. And then we'd have, we have an erase and we have a general, oh goodness, a general fill bucket, which we could just fill like a very large space with. 
we're going to just select the paintbrush. We're just going to do one by one. Um, when I change to 1.28, the seam box is out of alignment with the grid. Should I just leave it? Um, where did you change it? When I changed to 1.28, the seam box was out of alignment. Um, seems to be lined up. If it's working for you, that's good. Yeah, whatever just makes this lined up well. You're not trying to get the um, camera to align. We're trying to get the tiles to align. See, I'll show you. So this right now looks good because we changed it to 128, right? Look, it fits in a box perfectly. It snaps into the grid. We can just draw a line. Um, but say we go back to our grid and we change these to one. See, they're like, poke let me turn off my brush. They're like poking out from the grid. They don't quite fit the way they're supposed to. Um, but by changing that to 128, bam, they pop right in their grid perfectly. Our camera doesn't align. That's fine. The camera is just what you see on the screen. Um, and you can do anything as if you have the brush on, you can do shift and click. How did you get it on your brush again? On tile palette, you can just click brush on and off. So if it's on, you'll see it appear in your scene. And if you click it off, now it doesn't. Um, if you have it on brush, let's just pop this guy down here. And you click shift, you can actually erase too. So you can, you know, have fun with it. If you, let's try doing this one now. Hmm. Why is it doing that? Do I have to? Oh, that's not good. I have to do the brush, but I don't have a tile on my cursor. Do you have, let's see. I have mine in edit mode. What the heck? Okay, yeah. One, make sure you're not in edit mode on your tile palette. Mine was being very weird because of that. You'll want to select which one you're using. Why is it doing that? It's being so strange. Oh, okay. I don't know why it was doing that. Oh, that's not, yeah. Um, yeah, make sure it's not into edit mode. Click on your brush. You'll have to click on which one you're using. The reason it was being weird before is I was trying to click it in edit mode and instead of clicking which tile I wanted, it was overwriting them. Oh, May sneeze. Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so with the brush on, you can select which one you want. If I say click this one right here, now I can do this. And that's okay if you go outside the box. Right? It's like, oh no, what's happening? Um, it's just outside the camera, which is fine. We're going to set it up so the camera follows the player and it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, but that's how you lay your stuff up. I'm just going to pop this guy off because we're not going to make a huge scene. I think this should be enough for what we're doing. Um, now, another thing you can do is we're going to do, want to duplicate this. Ooh, what did I just do? I think I accidentally clicked delete instead of duplicate. And now instead of ground one, we're going to call this ground map colliders. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a tile map collider, which is really easy. So, um... An interesting thing for our inspector, right, is it's going to show us all the different parts of it. So it has a tile map and it has a renderer. If you click off the renderer, it doesn't show up. Oh, well, it's hard to see because, uh, there we go. We have two of them. So if we get rid of one, the other one just shows. Um, tile anchor is like what part of it it's aligned to. So if you start shifting that, it'll, like if you shifted this to zero or one, it would start aligning with one of the edges of the actual tiles. Um, 
uh, sorting order layer. So we will actually show you what goes on with that in a second. But you can do add component and you can add all kinds of different stuff to your assets. For right now, we want to do a tile map collider 2D. So what we've done is it's hard to see if I click off. You can kind of see that little green lines appearing around the um, sprites. So that has set up a collider, and I'll show you what that does in a second. But what it does is it makes it so that when we have our character, he's not going to just fall through the world. He's going to register that there's a collider here, and he's going to interact with it. Now, only things that have colliders will interact with other colliders. So if you have something like a cloud and you want it to just float through everything, you wouldn't put a collider on it because um, you don't want it to be stopped by anything. You want it to just go. Or so like maybe like um, a pickup that you have just like floating. Um, you actually probably would put a collider on that, but say it was um, maybe just a piece of environment art. Like say we wanted... Um, like a tree here, we could put a tree, and if we don't want it to stop our character's path, we won't put a collider on it, so that way you can just walk right through. Um, let's go ahead and bring in our little character. Now, the way this asset pack is set up, the character's in, like, pieces. Um, it's very annoying. So let me show you exactly which folders I'm clicking. We go to character. We're going to click this one on the right. It's character source. The one on the left is character animations. We're not going to play with the animations today. That could be something we do another day if you want. Um, we'll go to PNG. We'll go to one times. And we're just going to plop the body out because having all these um, pieces connected, it's, uh, it's just annoying for now. We're just going to uh, make a little guy right here. We'll place him like right there. We'll rename him player. Normally, I would even tag him player, but we're not going to be doing anything extensive enough to warrant that, so that's okay. Um, now, let's real quick, because we don't have like any kind of background or anything, let's pop one of those on just so I can show you guys layers. So if we go to background, we'll do... There's three of them. This is new background, update 1.9. So we'll do this one all the way to the right. PNG. We'll do this one. We only have 10 minutes left. Will you post the code? Yeah, I'll post the code. Um, but we have 10 minutes left officially, and then we have 15 minutes for questions. I'll just keep going into it. But yeah, regardless of how much we get through, I will post... Um, I'll post it in the Discord, probably a link to a GitHub, because I don't have the GitHub set up yet, um, a GitHub repository with my other project that we've set up. For now, see, here's um, a problem when you're like, oh, I'm trying to set this up, but it's like, this is supposed to be the background, and it's in front of everything. That's not good. I don't want it to be in front of everything. Well, what you can do, so let's do this. Is, and let's also just rename this background. See, it has a, an order in layer under its renderer. Um, the smaller the number in the order of layer is going to be how far back it goes. So, like, if we go to our grid, we're going to want to go to ground map. If we do order in layer and we switch this to one, it pops up in front. So we're going to want to put one for everything we want to pop in front. Like our player, he's gone, where'd he go? One, bam. Now everything is in front of the background. Another thing is if you want to, does it work in float values or only in? I think for layers, I'm actually not 100% sure. Um, oh, no, it doesn't even want me to put a decimal. So yeah, this is, um, this is int only. It makes sense. Um, there are also sorting layers. Uh, we're not going to get into those. You can be like really specific in where you want to put them. So if you don't always want to put like, oh, I don't know what layer this is. I have like 30 layers. What, which one is it? You can actually make layers like background or 
um, platforms or a character or stuff like that. So it, it knows where to put it for you. So you make like a general um, hierarchy of sorting layers and then it knows um, where to put them for you. Um, you could also adjust the camera. Um, position, like if we wanted to move the camera up or down, we could do that. Uh, right now at zero, it's actually working pretty well. So we'll just leave that. Also at any point you could put uh, control S and it will save the whole thing for you. Um, now let's go ahead for colliders. Does the order matter for colliders? Um, no, not for, like, if they are in a different order than the player, it doesn't matter in that they won't actually collide, but if you need to see them, like, if, um, I think technically we could literally get rid of this layer right here, this ground map, um, and it wouldn't matter, but I'm going to keep it there anyway. Um, this one, so if you had a collider set up, and you couldn't see it, it would matter for that. But like, we could switch this to layer 40 and the character would still interact with it. Um, now what you could do is you can have your player not react to certain sorting layers, I believe. Um, it, it just depends, you would set that up in the code. Um, speaking of code, we'll go ahead and start making some. Let's create a folder, we're gonna call it scripts. I will really quickly show you guys how to like move your character and whatnot. So let's go into the script folders. We're going to do create C sharp script and it'll let you name it. Let's call this character controller. Um, if you have VS code or um, VS studio, it'll probably put up that one when you click on it. Um, and for me, it wants to do visual studio. So on your code, um, it should open, every script will open like this. It'll just be like your general um, using statements, your class, um, which will be whatever you named your script. And they have to be the same. If you go and change the name of the script, you have to come into your script and change whatever you call it to, or it won't um, connect at all. Uh, you can get some really weird bugs with that too. Can you show the file location again real quick? Um, for what part? For like where we're putting the scripts? Yeah, I just went all the way back. You can go all the way back out to assets. In fact, that would actually be a better place. Let's go ahead and can I move this. Let's do, oh, it's being so annoying. It doesn't want to move. That's okay. I put mine in the Biot games. It doesn't matter. It would actually be better to stick your uh, script um seeing our uh, folder out here you just make a folder for it um you're gonna right click and do create and then there should be a c sharp script and you'll click that um put this here again um start this is what's called as soon as the script um, is like awakened. So like whenever the scene starts, that's usually when this is going to um, do it. And it'll only do this once. It'll only call start once. And then update will get called um, once per frame. And you're going to do a lot of your stuff in update. Um, oh, also real quick, we have to set some stuff up on the player real quick. Okay, so we're going to go to player. We're going to go to add component. And we're going to add a rigid body 2D. So this is what lets you interact with this sprite. Before it was just a sprite. It didn't have anything to it. It was like a picture. This is making it so now it has like a body, more or less. Um, all this stuff can stay on. We're going to keep the gravity scale on. Um, yeah, we're not going to change any of this. And we're also going to add... Um, what is it? A collider. We're going to do a circle collider 2D. Now the difference between all the different colliders is, um, just shape. Like that's the only difference. So if I had a little square guy, I would do a square collider. If I, if he was more pill shaped, I would do a capsule collider. 
Um, he's just a little circle, so we're just going to do a circle collider. And you could also adjust his radius. This is actually pretty good, though. It does try to do a, a decent estimate at what the shape is supposed to be. If it was off by, like, height, like, say it was too low, we could set um, the offset to change up or down or left or right. Um, and the radius would be how big or small it is. So if it made an estimate and it was too small, we could make it bigger or vice versa. Um, also, shortcut control Z will undo just about in like every other program, but just to let you know. Okay, so let me pull our script back up. So you want a circle collider and a rigid body 2D. And the um, default should be pretty accurate. Um, that's the wrong one. There we go. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to um, we want to interact with his rigid body. So the collider is so that he interacts with other colliders, and the rigid body is so we can move him. So we're going to want to do some basic stuff that any of our functions can interact with. They look like global variables, and for like all intents and purposes, they almost are, but we're... I know, like, in CS, they don't like you to declare, um, like, a bunch of random stuff at, at the top, but in game dev, we do that constantly. I know you're probably like, oh, don't do that. No, keep them variable specific, but we don't do that. Um, so we're going to want a public um, rigid body 2D, and we'll just call it rigid body 2D. Um, and a neat little thing, so like this will now show up in the um, inspector if we save this. We can go to our little guy and we'll say, I want him to have that script. I want him to have our character controller script. We'll give it to him. See, now it'll register his rigid body. So what we could do is we could just drag this here and now it will reference that or what we could do is we could say, say we don't want somebody in the inspector to be able to play with that. Like, we we're going to pass this off to our friend Jim, and he's going to edit it. And we're like, we don't want Jim to be able to play with that. He doesn't have access to the code, and we don't want him to be messing with those functions. We can do hide in inspector. And now if we save this, it'll go away. It's still there, but now, like, Jim or Jeff, whatever I call them, he can't play with it anymore. Um, so we're going to do a couple of things. Um, let's do public int speed, and that'll be how fast he goes. Um, and we'll go to start. So we only need anything you really only need to happen once or something you want to start at the very beginning, like you want to set a variable to something, you would do it here. So we're going to rigid body 2D equals, and since we don't want Jeff to be able to play with it, but we do need to get his rigid body and able to um, interact with it, we're going to do get component. And basically, anytime you're looking for something from another asset, you're going to do get component. So you do this all the time. Do rigid, oops, rigid um, body 2D. Um, this is a function call because we are trying to do that. We want to get it. Um, so now it has reference to it, and this is how we access it. Um, update. So let's see. We want him to be able to walk. So we're going to do if. And this is how you access when a player uh, presses a button. There's also another way to do inputs, but it's very, very complicated. We're not going to get into that. We're going to do input dot get key. So like what are they pressing? And in this case, we're going to want to do um, A for left. So let's do a key code A. Um, and that thing I mentioned at the beginning, everything has a transform. 
Well, that's what we're trying to mess with. We want to change its position. Position is where it is on the screen. So we're going to do transform um, dot position. And since this is going to the left, we're going to do minus equals. Oopsies. We're going to do transform dot right. Now, right doesn't actually mean right. It means um, the x coordinate. Um, that's just Unity's go to. For y, it's up, and for z, it's forward. Um, so x is right, and we're going to do. Um, we want this to happen over a time span, so we're going to do time dot delta time. And this is just like a Unity thing. And we want it to happen at a certain speed, so we're going to give it speed. And public int. Um, say we want Jeff to be able to play with that. We're like, okay, Jeff can modify the speed. Maybe we make the speed too slow, and we want Jeff to be able to make it faster. Um, you go to speed, anything you do in code should pop up wherever that script is on the character. Um, so we're going to do like five if we press, oh, this play, pause, and skip. I don't know what the skip button actually does. We never use it. Um, play and pause, if you press play, it'll show you what your game actually looks like. Oops. <laughs> you know, let me uh, input the... Uh, right control to real quick because otherwise we can only move left um you can literally just copy and paste this and now we're going to want to do d and instead of minus equals we want to do plus equals um and then we'll save make sure you save because if you don't save um it won't pop up Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. I'm not gonna follow this week. I'm gonna do that on the shop here. Yeah. Let's see if we can get the movement going real quick, and then I will drop in my Discord and stuff so you guys, um, we can continue doing this at a later time or whenever. Okay, so now we, if we press A and D, we can move. We can't do much else, but we can move. Um. Let's go ahead and do a jump then. Real quick, we can definitely get a jump in. All right, so it'll be the same thing, except with W for the most part. Uh, but this will change. We're going to, um, I'm also gonna show you how to do an enumerator which we use a lot in game dev. Um, so uh, I'll skip through all the like testing stuff. Um, we'll do an if statement. We're gonna check to see if our character is currently jumping. We only want them to jump once. So we'll also want to set up a bool real quick. And we don't want uh, Jeff to be able to play with this either. So we're gonna, and whatever you're hiding, you wanna put hide inspector on top of. We're going to do public pool jump. Oops, jump. And we'll go ahead and set at the very start that your character isn't jumping because they're not, they're just existing. So we're gonna see if they're jumping. And if they are not jumping, we're going to start coroutine. We're going to go ahead and call it jump. Now, coroutine is just basically a function that has like a different set of rules. Coroutines um, can happen while other functions are going on. So they're not really limited by like, Oh, this goes in order. Coroutines just kind of do whatever they want. Um, and so they can be a little scary if you don't know what you're doing because uh, the code can get very funky. They're called enumerators. We named ours jump. They're set up just like functions. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, so when this happens, we want to let the game know um, that our character is jumping. So we're going to set this temporary variable to be like, look, um, you're jumping. Um, and here, I'm just going to plop this down. This isn't going to make like a ton of sense, and that's okay. How we add force, so like how we're getting the character to move up is we're adding force and we're doing it by a certain power. So we're just doing like 20 uh, force, like generic force unit up. Um, uh, Newton's, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what like the specific thing is. It's all like uh, technically arbitrary because it's all in a game engine. Um, and it's something you'll definitely want to play with. So we're just saying we want to apply this much force, like really quick, a set amount of times. And the reason why we're doing it in a for loop is because enumerators are very weird. Um, and when we do it just once, we're applying such like a quick, small force that they are technically jumping, but you can't see it. So we're saying do that like 10 times really quick and it'll do it in like a flat like you won't it, it won't look like it's happening 10 times it'll look like it's happening one time and this is definitely something to just play with um and the reason we're doing this is because we could take all this out and just let them add the force but then they could jump forever there's nothing stopping them from jumping like 30 times in a row and they could just jump right off the screen and we'll never see them again um but we're trying to put like a limit. Like let's say we only want them to jump once. So another interesting thing about enumerators is they are yielding the return. You're basically saying get, get the thing to return. It's less like a fancy return statement. But with enumerators, you can actually wait in real time and you can't do this in a normal function. So we want to do like only let them jump like once per second because otherwise they're just going to spam jump. Um, and you can make these floats. You can definitely do all that. You could say, I want them to wait one and a half seconds. You just have to put a little float marker. Uh, we're just going to do one second. You just need to like one per second. That's not bad. And then we're going to say, uh, jump equals false. Now we're saying, okay, now they can go ahead and jump again. But, and then you still have to return out. So even though we are yielding a return, because it's not a true return, we're actually yielding, um, like we're returning a time period, we still have to return a null since there's um, nothing to normally return. Um, so now if we pop back into our to start, oops, I think I misspelled coroutine. Um, I did, I accidentally deleted the O. A character controller dot jump cannot be used like a method. Did I say dot jump? It's a lowercase for some reason. There we go. See, that was just some syntax stuff. It'll it, Unity will let you know when you mess up syntax. Okay, so now if we're doing it, we can go, oh, look, he's jumping. And notice he's kind of tilting because all this physics is happening and it's not perfect, right? So now he's getting all funky. There's a very easy thing. If we don't want him to rotate, go to player, um, go to... What is it? A rigid body. We're going to go to constraints and say freeze rotation. So we don't want him rotating. And now, look, perfect. Now, all the physics is still being applied the same way, but because his rotation isn't allowed to change, it doesn't matter. One real quick thing I will show you guys how to do, since it'll only take a second, is we want the camera to follow him, right? Well, easy peasy. Okay. What we're going to do is we'll make a new script. We'll call it camera controller. We call everything in game dev controllers for some reason. Um, uh, 
Bring that over here. It popped up in the wrong one for a second. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is we need to get a couple things. We want it to follow the player, so we need to get the player. Public transform, so get the position of player. And we're gonna do a good old hide and inspector, and I'll just go ahead and do this. And we wanna get an offset, because we don't want the camera to be inside of the player. Public vector three offset. Um, we don't even need a start function. We want just one thing to happen, and that's for them to follow the camera. So the offset is going to be um, and every time you set something to a vector, it has to be a new vector, unless you are setting it to something that is holding a vector. So we're setting it to a new vector, three. It's three dimensions, x, y, and z. Um, and what you'll want to do is go to your main camera and see what is its offset right now. We want it to be the same thing, right? So it's you'll just see what is its position in the world right now. We like it at 0, 0, negative 10. Um, and now we want the camera to follow them. This is a, uh, yeah, all right, transform dot position so give it where where do you want the camera to be what is the and whenever you do something like this transform it's assuming whatever this is going to be attached to so it will be attached to the camera so that's where we're going to put it um we're going to do again a new vector three um and so this is where we want it to be we want it to be wherever the player is dot position dot x because we're in the x right now this is what we're modifying we want it to be plus the offset um our offset right now is actually zero so we can just ignore that um and we'll do the same thing for the y because the y is also zero and we'll do the same thing for the z except now we're going to do the offset so we'll do offset um, dot z Oops. we'll save that and now we want to go to our main camera we want to add our camera controller we have transform will not be what did I do wrong? It doesn't like line what seven public oh oopsies I made it lowercase on accident. Okay, so we got it on here. And now we need to link the player because we want it to know um, what it is. So we can either go down here and select the player like that, or we could drag the player onto it. When I try to add my script, I get an error. What is the error? It might have been, um, is it that same transform error? We'll just go ahead and show it off real quick. Now we're following the player. So you could play with it, you could change the offset and have it be at a different. Um... I'll put my code back up here so you can do it. The only other thing I was going to do was I was going to add a chest and do it so when you run into the chest, it um, changes the sprite from a closed chest to an open chest. So that'll be in the code I post for you guys too. Um, 
Yeah, but what is the error you're getting? If you do get one, you should be able to copy it. Script class can't be found. Can't add script. Um, I would say make sure your name here matches the one here. Can't add script, that's very weird. You should be able to also just drag your script right onto um, whatever thing you're trying to add it to. So for us, we wanted to do it to the main camera. So we dragged it right on. Um, I will go ahead and post the code so you guys can see whatever is, um, if you are having problems, what's going on with that. Um, also, don't forget to save your oopsies, save your teams. If you try to uh, log out, it'll also ask you to save anyway. But here, let me pop my Discord down. Um, this is my user in Discord. I should also be in the night hacks discord if you want to click on that for me there let me link my let's see if you want to follow my twitch i do game stuff on there oh my goodness i have so many windows open Um, yeah, if you want, we could, um, you can message me in Discord and I can try to help. We could do a, um, voice call and I could try to figure that out for you. I don't know why, um, the script wouldn't be adding. There's gotta be like a naming error or something. Um. But yeah, I will, um. Yeah, I will post in the Night Hacks Discord the link to the GitHub. I will do that real, ca uh, real, quack, real quick and post that to you guys so you can have that. It'll be the whole project file. So you could literally download the entire thing in Unity. And if you're on the same version as me, you can literally just like open it. Um, and it'll be no problem. Oh, real quick, when you're opening something in Unity... See, so like, this is, um, you'll go to Assets, you'll click Scenes, and you'll just open the actual scene. There's not, like, a specific file that's, like, how to open, um, whatever, like, in Unreal, it'll be called a project file. And this one, uh, there's scene files, so you'll want to actually open the specific scene file, or you can link it in the hub, and it'll open it for you. But, yeah. Thank you guys for seeing through this. Um, we'll probably have more Unity workshops in the future. But um, yeah, I will post that code for you. And if you have any follow-up questions or would like maybe a, a workshop outside of Night Hacks or something, let me know. And I can always do another one. Or I could do a thing on Twitch where we make a bigger project. We could even try making like a whole game um, in like a couple hours. Um, we can do win conditions, health, damage. I know there are some enemies in here. I might even pick just a different pack that lets us play with animations because the way this pack has animation set up is like really, really rudimentary and like not conducive to actually making animations. Um, and you won't have to make them in the sense that you'll have to make the art. You'll just be linking the art. Can I make a game like Celeste and Unity pretty easily? A game like Celeste, um, the core mechanics, yeah. Anything, uh, I've only played, I think, like, halfway through Celeste. So I just got through the area where there's, like, the moving blocks that you control by, like, tilting direction. Stuff like that would be slightly more hard to program, but that's more on, like, your programming level, less on Unity. Um, a lot of bigger games have been made with Unity. They just pay to get the right to not have made with unity appear at the beginning of their screen 
um, what was it called? There's this really cute multiplayer like cooking simulator. Um, it's like really hectic. I forget what it's called. There's two of them now. They made a sequel. That was made with Unity and you would never guess it because it looks so good. Unity gets a bad rap because they let everybody who use it for free use it with the condition that it has to say made with Unity at the very beginning. Um, so any like professional uh, game studios will usually pay and get that out of the front because they don't want it to say that. Do they actually get royalties from it? Unity won't take any money from you, I think, unless you make a certain amount. Let me see if we can figure that out. I know Unreal won't take anything from you unless you've made at least a million dollars. Unity, let's see. Um, yeah, they don't do royalties. They do a... Oh, it says Unity is royalty-free. We don't charge on a per-title basis or require a revenue share. Oh, that's right. Okay, so they don't take money based on how much it's like you're paying for the license. Unreal does it the other way. So Unreal does it where they won't ask you for any money at all unless you make a million dollars profit too. I'm pretty sure that's not just like total revenue. It's like actual profit, um, which is really cool. And then you like you're paying by license. It's kind of like Maya where you can use it for free as long as you're not making any money. And then they want you to pay for, Maya's a little different than that. They want you to pay for a license the second you even attempt to make money from it. So you could use Maya all you want for free, but then the second you like put your game on Steam, they'll want money. Of course, they're not going to flag like students or like people making no money because it's of no cost benefit for them to like be super aggressive like that. But if you were a studio and you were making maybe even like, um, I, I want to say maybe if you were even approaching like 50,000, they'd probably start flagging you down for your, your licenses. Um, but yeah, Unity doesn't care. You can just pay to get that made with Unity off the, um, the front of it. I wonder if I can, what's that little, let's see. Um, uh, Overcooked. If you've ever seen Overcooked or Overcooked 2, that was made in Unity. Um, let's see. Games made in Unity. It is very much more associated with, um, like, uh, beginners. Oh, yeah, that one is fun. Yeah, I liked it. I played it with my sister a lot. It's a cute game. Um, let's see if I can find any big games here that were made. Apparently, Temple Run was made with Unity. I didn't know that. Uh, family Guy Online. Interesting. Okay. Um, lots. Of, it looks like lots of mobile games. The original Slender game, if you remember that, Slender in the Eight Pages, that was made with Unity. That one you can kind of see. <laughs> um, Thomas Was Alone. I, don't, I haven't played that, but I've heard of that one. Um, Deus Ex The Fall was made in Unity. Uh, Surgeon Simulator, if you remember that. Temple Run 2. Angry Birds. Dragon Quest 7. Oh, the phone version. I was like, there's no way that was made in Unity. Um, Plague Inc. Um, there's a few. Here, let me drag this over. There's quite a... Um, Phasmophobia's made in Unity 2. Interesting. Oh, wow. Flashback. Yeah, there's some um, big flashback stuff on here. Uh, Pokemon Go was made in you. I didn't know that either. I think I would have heard of that one. Um, Ruby, Grim Eclipse. Yeah, it looks like anything mobile is basically made in Unity for the most part. I know you can make Unreal games that go on your phone, but... um. Oh, wait, what? Oh, wow, the Pokemon remakes are made in... um. Unity, wow. I'm sorry, I was never I would never expect that. That's crazy. Well, if you're gonna play uh Pokemon uh Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl, that's made in Unity. So you can make some very good games in Unity. That's crazy to be announced. Oh wow. I think I knew Hollow Knight was made in Unity, but yeah, Hollow Knight Silk Songs may going to be made in Unity. 
unfortunately, Yandere Simulator is going to be making the movie. Um, but yeah, my pre-order went through yesterday. I got to remember to pre-order it. Diamond and Pearl Jig. Diamond, that's the real cool kids are all buying Pokemon Diamond. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think so. yeah, that's what my sister messaged me and said. Are you getting Diamond or Pearl? I'll get the other one. Okay, now we have some more people. It has crossed it. So, yes, uh, we just went over some games that were made in Unity. It was uh, Jake asked if you can make some good ones. Yeah. Um, can you make a game like Celeste in Unity? And I don't know what Celeste was made in, but it does look like you could make some very, very, very good games in Unity. Um, the ones we were just talking about are the Pokemon remakes, Brilliant Diamond and, um, shoot, what are they called? I just put it down. Whatever, the Diamond and Pearl remakes are actually being made in Unity, which is a big surprise, honestly. I wasn't expecting that. That's um, very interesting. So yeah, you can make good games with Unity. Um, it's free. You can just pay to get the little Unity logo off the front with a license. But yeah, thank you guys for joining the workshop. I hope you learned something from it. At the very least, you've got um, Unity installed now. 